Our Father, we bless your name this afternoon. We praise you because you give us life to live. And you're willing to help us live that life. We're asking that as we open our eyes this afternoon to see why we're here, where we're going, what we ought to be doing, and what we shall receive after doing what we ought to do. We are asking that every one of us will come to know and to understand what will make you happy in and our lives. And Lay your gentle hand upon every heart and lead us in the right way. In Jesus' name we pray. It's quite an interesting crowd of people that we have here this day. There are people who have been used to coming to this place and always rejoice whenever they come here. Other people started coming just recently and um, they've been trying to understand all that we're reading and explaining from the word of God. And yet there are others who have been used to going to some other places and this may all be new to them as we're here today. Let us take a look at it. They used to go into meetings and places where the speaker just makes everybody happy and they laugh and forget their sorrows temporarily and then maybe later when they go back home they start the serious problems again in their lives and then they start going to meetings and places where they just laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。laugh。
within the family or in the marketplace on Sunday or during the week God is eagerly waiting that a time will come in your life when you will ask what is the purpose for my living if you read your Bible very well you'll discover that God is a God of plan and whenever God is involved with any sin, anywhere, anytime, there's something significant you see. He is a planner. If he's uh, getting involved in building a tabernacle in the wilderness, he has a plan. If he's involved in building a temple while the people are settled in the land of Palestine, he has a plan. If he's sending a son, Jesus Christ, into the world, he has a plan. And for everyone that is born into this world, God is interested, God is involved, and God is the planner. In Exodus chapter 25, it's in verse 40 that we read this interesting verse. Talking to us about the plan of God. In this case, for a temporal scene in the wilderness called the tabernacle. Exodus chapter 25, verse 40. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was showed thee. In the mount. Siki ye si ki wo ki o shi wo gege bi akwere wo ti afi ha o lori oki. God had told Moses that a tabernacle was to be built. That tabernacle had three different sections or compartments. The outer court. That was a place that was on the outside of the tabernacle proper. Next to that there was a holy place. Next to that, the Holy of Holies, where the Shekinah glory, the light of God was all the all the while burning, where the ark was uh, was, and where the cherubim were, and where continually the presence of God was felt. And God will not allow the children of Israel just to build anyhow, anything that they wanted. God is a planner. And when he gets involved in with anything and anyone at any time, he always makes the plan and the pattern very, very clear. I told you just now. That the tabernacle at the outer court, the holy place, and the holy of holies, and you have an outer court, your body. After your body, then you have the soul. After the soul, you have the inner man, which is the spirit. Do you want to tell me that if God will take interest in wanting to plan before a tabernacle was built, that he doesn't have any plan for your soul, for your spirit, and for your body? In your verse of me, baby, all on Ubani, you have a fellow what you see, you didn't see. At the court, the last and last, melo melo wani, washi ko wani, you didn't see. He has a plan for you. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever asked God about that plan? Do you know whether you are building according to the plan of your life or you are not building according to any plan? First Chronicles chapter 28. Chronicles chapter 28. 
Here the temple was to be built. And David was interested in building this temple. Of course he didn't have the chance. Because again God had another purpose or plan for him. But Solomon was to be the person to build that temple. Here is what we read about that temple. First Chronicles chapter 28 verse 2. Chronicles then David the king stood up upon his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people, as for me I had in mine heart to build an house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God and had made ready for the building. Imi fe le okan mi lati ko ile isi mi kan fun akoti eri ma je mu oluwa ati fun itise olorun wa mo si ti mura tan fun kikole na go over to verse 11 lo si lo si ese ikokan la then david gave to solomon a son the pattern of the porch and of the houses thereof and of the treasuries thereof and of the upper chambers thereof and of the inner palace thereof and of the place of the mercy seat, every detail was outlined. Nigba na ni da fi di fi akere fun Solomon ni omo omo re ti iloro ati ti ile re ati ti ibi ishura re ati ti yara oke re ati ti magani no re ati ti ibu joko ano re bobo re ni a fi lele ni esese. Verse twelve. Esse ikejila. And the pattern of all that he had by the spirit of the courts of the house of the Lord. Of all the chambers round about, of the treasuries of the house of God, of the treasuries of the dedicated things, he received everything by the Spirit of the Lord. <laughs> The temple was eventually built according to the very plan of God. Historians tell us that uh, this, te this temple was eventually destroyed. And another temple was built similar to this. Students of history know that that temple again was destroyed. And by the time that Jesus Jesus Christ was living on earth. Another temple was in existence. And they had been held by Herod. And from the study of this temple that Joseph was the great historian of the first century wrote about. Again, we're told that this temple had some resemblance to the one in the wilderness, to the tabernacle. Why was God interested in such a temple? This was to show his physical presence here upon the earth. And you know when the temple of Solomon was being dedicated, the glory of God came down, the spirit of the Lord filled the whole place until they could no more minister. What were you created? So that you can manifest the presence of God, the power of God, and Christ can become preeminent in your life. If the tabernacle in the wilderness that was to show the physical presence or evidence of the presence of God and the same thing was the temple, how much more? If that was planned by God, your life must be planned by God. You said, well, that is talking about building. And I want a verse that is talking about the human being. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Okay. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified or set thee apart. 
and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. That's Jeremiah. Before he was born, God planned his life. There was a purpose for his birth. You say, well, that's a Jew. I want a Gentile. Isaiah chapter 45. I am reading in verse 1. Isaiah chapter 45. Verse 1. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holding, to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings to open before him, the two lived gates, and the gates shall not be shut. By any Ulua we fu any Rurore, Funkirusi, any Timodi or Waterem, Latishagua and Morile, Niwa Jure, Emiosi two and Muriagbe and Moba, Latishi, the Kumiji, Niwa Jure, Akiosi, T. Asena. Verse 5. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I gather thee, though thou hast not known me. Emilio Oluwa, Kosi Elumira, Kosi Olamu Kalehimi, Modi Oliamuri, Vi Iwa Kutile Timami. He wasn't a believer yet. He should never go. And yet God had a plan. For his life. There was a purpose that he was born. And for everyone here this morning, I want to declare to you very boldly so that you will be sure there is a purpose for your life. Well, the purpose of your life may just be to be an important person in your community that will lead people into the light. When we talk about purpose for living, it takes together very many things. And of course, what you uh, eventually settle down to do in life will be major in the purpose where you are living. Let's look at verse 9. And you know it it is true that God is not willing that anyone should perish. So the general purpose of God for everyone is that you are born again. But then you have a particular purpose in your life as to what to do particularly. You know there is a work you are supposed to do. A career you are supposed to follow. An endeavor you are supposed to address yourself to and face it and focus your attention on it and never deviate. Jesus knew his purpose for living. Paul the apostle knew the course he must follow. And you ought to know the purpose for your living. I said I will talk on the partner as well. Many young people think about the partner they ought to have in life without thinking of the purpose why they are living. And before I come back to the purpose for living, I want to show you that in the plan of God, purpose always comes before partner. If you don't get any other thing this morning, get that. Purpose always comes before partner. Many people have wrecked their lives. Many people have just come before the wall and that stops them from making progress. And it is because the order is changed. They have chosen the partner first 
before determining the purpose for living. And I want to ring it loud in your ears. Determine the purpose for living first. Ask the Lord. Why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? What is your purpose for my life? After that is settled. Make a plan under God by the help of God to achieve that purpose. It's after that. Only after the purpose is settled. You then begin to think about the partner. Turn to Genesis chapter 2. I know we have all read this before. But when the Spirit of God breathes upon a common passage, it makes it uncommon. Let's see Genesis chapter 2. Genesis And um, in verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And God put Adam in the garden of Eden. He located him in a particular place. Note it. That point where God located him. Adam was to do something there. In the family where you are located. In the village where you have grown up. In the school where you have found yourself. In the garden of life surrounding you. In the place where God has put you. Why are you there? What are you supposed to do there? What is the purpose for which God himself put you there? Verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. He had two things to do there. He was to dress the garden. That is to take care of the garden. He was to keep the garden. That word keep in the Hebrew is Shama. S-H-A-M-A-A-R. And it means to guard it, to watch over it. So that no intruder, no thief will come into that garden. He was to keep that garden so that that garden will fulfill the purpose of God for that garden. It in dressing that garden, laziness was ruled out from his life. In keeping that garden, carelessness was ruled out of his life. It's very easy to be lazy before you discover the purpose of God for your life. Those who have not known the purpose of living are generally careless. But God, when God writes it with his own pen upon your heart and he tells you, my son, my daughter, this is the reason why I put you in this place. It becomes your duty, your responsibility to fulfill that before you go home. Because that is the purpose after the purpose for living had been determined after he had put him in the garden after he had instructed him and he had, and he had told him 
dress the garden, keep the garden. The Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make and help meet for him. Those two words, help meet. They're taken from the Hebrew word that is spelled A Y Z A R. And it means to help someone fulfill the goal of his life. It is called calling another person alongside with you to help in the task of life. Is it to help you in anything you want to do? No, it is to help you in what God ordains some plans, some purposes that you will do in life. What is it to help you? If you have read about the life of Isaac before, the child of the son of Abraham, before he was born, between God and Abraham, the purpose for the life of Isaac had been determined. After that, the partner. Have you looked at Jesus Christ as the head of the church? As the bridegroom to the bride, that is to the church. Because we are told that Jesus Christ and the church they form a beautiful example of the husband and the wife. But have you realized that first Christ determined the purpose why he came into the world? After the purpose was determined, then the wife, the church, came after. After our society makes people to think about marriage, about love, about friendship, Long before you ever think about any purpose in your life. From primary school, our children they know about having boyfriend or girlfriend. They know nothing about preparing for the future. They know nothing about the plan of God. They know nothing about the purpose of God for their living. The film shows encourage a sex and them and women and all the TV all the TV programs they make you think about marriage first and then life after and therefore they change the order they twist your mind and whether in the TV or with the film shows or with your friends that are talking to you. Oh, unfortunately, with our parents. You know what is thought about is marriage, marriage, partner, partner, and you never have any purpose for living. Let me show you a man that had the order in another direction. Now, you didn't think about the purpose first. It was first of all the partner. After that came the purpose. And he suffered for it. Exodus chapter 2. Exodus. We're reading about a man that you know very well. But I think there is something you don't know about this man very well. Exodus chapter 2 verse 11. And it came to pass in those days that Moses was grown. When Moses was grown, 
that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their bodies and he spied an Egyptian smiting an Hebrew one of his brethren Verse 12. And he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together, and he said to him that did the wrong, wherefore smitest thy fellow. And he said, Who made the prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this sin is known. Now, when Pharaoh had this sin, he sought to slay Moses, but Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian and he sat down by a well. Let me repeat the story to you. Moses knew the plan of God or the purpose of God for his life. But then there is something he did not know. After you have known the will of God or the purpose of God for living, what do you do? Everybody will tell you, run ahead and start immediately. The wisdom of God and his name is Jesus, he says no. After you have known the purpose of God, sit down. When you know the purpose of God for your life, the first thing, my brother, my sister, is sit down. I thought immediately I know the will of God, the purpose of God. I am to run. Luke chapter 14. When you sit down, what are you sitting down to do? You are sitting to plan. Sitting to organize. Sitting to map out the way that will make you to reach that purpose in life. Sitting to reorganize everything in your life to point as arrows to that very purpose of living. Luke chapter 14 verse 28 For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost whether he have sufficient to finish it? What was Jesus saying? Have you got the plan of the building from the architect? Get a table before you. Put the light on. Sit on the chair. Look at the drawing of the architect. Try to understand it. Determine how it looks. And see whether where you want to build that place, whether it will take it or not. Look at the cost. Look at your resources. See whether the 
resources will be able to take the plan to, to the end. That's what Jesus is saying. And the architect of heaven. The great planner in heaven. God Almighty, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the architect and the planner. And he has a plan for your life. What you will do. What will please him. What will make you happy. What will give you the fulfillment of your life. Number one, discover that purpose. Determine that plan. When you have known it, say it down. Then think. Ask God. Ask for wisdom. To be able to go through in life. You know when you are building. Sometimes you'll run out of resources. If you didn't plan before. You will abandon that house there. You'll start doing another thing. You'll come against road blocks. But if you had a plan. You You'll go back to God. And you'll say, we have finished the first phase of the plan. Now we go to the second phase. Reason will not be able to carry you through. Reason can go the first mile. But faith will go the second mile. Human courage and human encouragement will go the first Smile. But the divine assurance from God that you are following my plan will only carry you through the second mile. Copying other people. They have gone forward. Therefore, I will move forward as well. That can make you go through the first mile. But being encouraged by God, having God as a partner and companion. Be sure I am following the purpose that God wants me to fulfill. It's the only thing that can make you go through the second mile. And so Moses knew the purpose of God. But he didn't sit down. He started running. And therefore he ruined his chance of fulfilling that purpose immediately. Haven't found himself um, in a place he found himself. Look at Exodus chapter 2. Exodus Reading from verse 16. Now the priests of Midian had seven daughters, no brothers. And they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. All these seven daughters were doing a work that man should have been doing. Because obviously Jethro had no son. Immediately you know something about the wife that Moses eventually married. A woman that had never known how to relate properly to a man. Women thinking Women planning Women foreseeing Women taking animals to water That was the community in which uh, This woman that Moses eventually married That was the condition in which she was And eventually Moses got this wife Verse uh, 21. And um, Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses 
Zipora, his daughter. Ose do ma mose lati ma aba okun ni na gbe. Ose fi Zipora omo binrin re fun Mose. Did Mose enjoy it? Ye Mose gbadun re bi. Well, we can tell. Ali so. Number 1. Ekini. When you have a child. Nigba ti o ba bi mo. Especially the first child. Oh yeah, ni gba ta kiji lo ma ko. You look through ancient history. Wa wu awon eta to ti koja. You look through your community. Wa wu awojo re. You look for the best name ever. Wa wu oruko to dara julo. It shows your joy. O fi ayo re han. The name you give to your First child, it's an indication of the image you've been carrying on your mind. The plan you've been holding in your mind. It's an indication of the fulfillment of your joy. What does Moses call his first child? Verse 22. And she bear him a son, and he called his name Gershom. And what is the meaning? I have been a stranger in a strange land. That's your name, son. Ose bi ama kure kafun. Ose soru kore ni Gershomu. Kini itu mare. Ni tori ti owipe. Imi ti she atifoni. Imi ti she atifoni le ajeji. A, ref a refugee, that's what he was saying. And anything she had to go. But uh, there is a more indication that shows that when this woman came into the life of Moses, was he able to then fulfill the purpose of his life without any hindrance? Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4 Exodus verse 24 And it came to pass by the way in the inn that the Lord met him and sought to kill him let me tell you the background to that uh, story. After Moses got married, Moses was a Hebrew. He had lived in Egypt. The Hebrews and the Egyptians had the right of circumcision for their children. The Hebrews circumcised on the eighth day. The Egyptians waited until a little after to circumcise the children. So whether we're thinking of Moses as a Hebrew or somebody who was brought up in Egypt, he knew about circumcision for the child. But this Midianite, Zipporah the wife, did not know anything about circumcision. And Moses wanted to circumcise that child. And Moses obviously told the woman, I am a Hebrew, I must circumcise the child. I have a purpose in my life, which I set apart to choose the partner first. And now that the child has come, I remember the purpose of my life to fulfill that purpose. Our son must be circumcised. And Zipporah said, No. I don't agree. It will never be done. Not on my life, except over my dead body, you will do that. But uh, when they were going in the way, after God now called Moses to fulfill the purpose of God for his life, then God met him in the way. Even I have a purpose for you. What are you doing with an uncircumcised son? And then the Lord sought to kill him. Look at verse 25. Immediately this woman, a rank unbeliever, a woman that was not submissive at all. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody husband thou art to me. Uh, it, well, they may argue about it. And when this danger came, Zipporah knew it was because she did not submit to what Moses had said. And then, 
He too, she took a sharp stone. Circumcised the child. O wamu kutami mu o komana nila. She did it grudgingly. O she kwenu ikusini. Arrogantly. O she kwenu ibera. With pride. Kwenu ikusini. With a deep resentment within her heart. Kwenu ikusini oni no kare. And immediately Moses realized something. Let's say kese Moses wamu kan. If I'm to fulfill the purpose of God for my life. Fi umbati lati mu iti olono she ni no aye. At this point in this place. Ni bi ni waka. This woman will go back. I will have to live without her. I will have to go forward in the purpose of God without this woman. I realized my mistake. I did not determine my purpose. I did not sit down to plan the purpose of my life. I did not organize my life to fulfill this purpose before I got married. And now I am suffering. But there is something I will do. Now, between chapter 4, after this point, up to chapter 18, that I'm going to open now, you don't hear about the wife of Moses. It took a man with iron constitution to be able to do that. It, it took a man that will say, Here I am going, and this is the narrow way I'm following, and I will not turn back. I will not even look back to do what Moses did. Exodus chapter 18. From verse 1, when Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father in law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people, uh, and that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt, and then Jethro, Moses' father in law, took Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back. Alufa Midian ni ana Moses igbo ohun gbogbo ti Olorun ti se fun Moses ati fun Israel awon eni ara ati pe Oluwa mu Israel la Egypt jade wa nigba na ni Jethro ana Moses Musipora aya Moses wa leyin ti o ti ran pada and her two sons of which the name of the one was Gershom for he said I have been I have been an alien in a strange land ati awon mo re mejeji ti oruko okan je Gershom now do you see that uh, he sent the woman back because he realized that that partner will just ruin and destroy the purpose of God for his life? My brother, my sister, something is significant here. Moses had missed this wife for a long time. He had missed the children for a long time. But he faced the purpose of God for his life. It was hard only it was difficult but he knew that that was the price he had to pay for making the partner come before the purpose but look at verse 5 and Jethro and Moses father-in-law came with his sons and his wife unto Moses into the wilderness where he had encamped at the mount of God and he said unto Moses, I thy father-in-law Jethro am come unto thee and thy wife and her two sons with her. And Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and did obeisance and kissed him and they asked each other, of their welfare, and they came into the tent. Moses is jadi loye pa dia nore. Osi teriba, osi fenu kuli enu. Once he be the alafia ramu, once he wo inua. 
Read the whole passage yourself later. You will discover something. No conversation between Moses and the wife. They had nothing to talk about. The wife did not agree with the purpose of God for his life. It was a father-in-law that appreciated Moses and the purpose of God a little. And so Moses found it easier to talk with Jethro, the father-in-law. My brother and my sister, as we have read this, and know that you have known about other people in this tree. You have heard about John Wesley. He had a purpose of God for his life. He knew it even before he was converted. The moment he was converted, he started doing it. After he said, I felt my heart strangely warmed by the love of God. And from that time, he felt the world is my parish. Preaching the gospel, I will preach the gospel. In the marketplace, he saw a pulpit from which he could preach. On the field, he saw a pulpit near a tree where he could preach. Anywhere and everywhere in England, he was going about preaching the gospel. But then he began to think about a life partner. He did not relate that life partner to the purpose of God for his life. And in marriage, how was it? While he suffered, like Moses suffered. Not many people are like Moses and John Wesley. Who, despite the handicap in their life, they could still forge ahead and fulfill the purpose of God for their lives? Woman, you are married already. And maybe your husband is here this morning. Your husband is a carpenter. Are you convinced in the purpose of God for your husband to be a carpenter? Are you encouraging him? Lifting him up. Assisting him. Going along on his side. Helping him in the work he's to do in life. My sister, your husband is a contractor. Or an engineer, engineer. Or a doctor that has to have night calls. You as a wife. Have you identified yourself with the purpose of God for your husband? When he goes out of the house as a doctor, are you able to take care of the children that is that are left behind? Are you able to assure the children your daddy loves you for the purpose of God for his life is to care for human beings who are dying with sicknesses and diseases. If you are married to a person who has to be traveling up and down and most of the time you are the one at home having to clean the house receive the visitors and be hospitable take care of the children when the in-laws come, you are the one that is to do the work of the husband and the wife all together, making the in-laws to be at peace with your family. When you marry, did you know you were marrying a man that had determined the purpose of God for his life? And did you come alongside of him? As a helper, as a counselor, as an advisor, as a burden bearer, to bear the burden together. When the going is hard, to identify with that difficulty. When it looks like your husband is going to be sidetracked, go aside. To come along with your husband, strengthen the weak knees, strengthen the legs. Hands. When people are gossiping about him, because the purpose of his life is having a little hindrance and a little delay, are you able to offer an encouragement? 
Are you able to kneel down with your husband and say yes? We're sharing the purpose together. Oh, are you a Zipporah in the home? Are you Mrs. Wesley in the home? That you marry the man you didn't marry the purpose of the life of the man. You wanted his money, but you did not like his business. You accepted the children that will come between you, but you did not. You did not accept the body that will come with the children. It's better to be late than never. If you have never thought about it, and you are just thinking about it for the first time this morning, I have got a partner. You have said, join. We said this to, this morning. I have got a partner who has got a purpose. I have received the partner with the purpose of his life. I will enjoy the partner and accept the purpose as well. And I will make sure there is no conflict. As I love the partner, I love the purpose of his life. I am not ashamed of this partner, neither am I ashamed of the purpose for living for my husband. If you have not got married yet and you are just there thinking about your life partner I am here to ask you have you thought about the purpose of God for your life? After you know the purpose of God for your life how then will you be able to choose a partner? I know that my brothers who have preached here have talked seriously and effectively on choosing a life partner but I can put the plaster on the finished building. I can put the little ceiling on the roof that is already completed. I can put the window blinds upon the windows that are already constructed. So then if you want to have a partner for your life, as I've told you in all this message, determine the purpose of God for where you are living first. Because if only in this world we have any gain, we have most men miserable. What am I saying? Let eternity come into your thinking. Think of what will please the heart of the Father. What does God want me to do? What is He planning for me? What plan am I going to have from the great architect of heaven? Remember, there is life after death. And remember that the purpose purpose of God has taken that into consideration. The purpose of God for your life has taken into consideration that you are not to live for only 70 years. That you are to live after death. And his purpose has added the salvation, this redemption alongside with the purpose of God. Then work in that purpose. After determining that purpose, Let walk in it. it. Live in it. Let no book that you read change that purpose. Let no friends sidetrack you. Let no lack of money sidetrack you. Sidetrack you. It may be a fact that you don't have encouragement from people. Keep on. Keep at it. Stick to it. Whatever God wants you to be, what He wants you to have, what He wants you to do, stay at it. Sit down, get it done until it is finished. Follow God step by step. When He reveals how to build the foundation of the plan He has given you, do it. Don't be tired. A house is built by putting one block on the building one at 
at a time. Eh, I'm calling him by big block. It may look slow. Only, only, only. Focus your attention on it. What's up, focus? Drummers may be drumming around you. I want to do my little bit. Close your ears. Put the next block on the building. What we block? Put the cement on it. What we If there is difficulty, kneel down before that block of your life. You walk, you walk, you walk. And begin to pray. Oh God, I will not give up. From the moment I discover the purpose of God for my life, I am staying there. It may look like in the block factory the people have uh, exhausted all their blocks. Look up to God. It may look like all the workers around you, they are not interested in the purpose of God for your life anymore. The counselors who ought to counsel you, the teachers who ought to teach you, the instructors who ought to train you, the advisors who ought to come around you and encourage you, they may all leave your side. Stay by the building of your life. Stay by the purpose of your life. And keep on putting the blocks of progress. Stay at it. The rainy season will come. Don't go under the shed. Stay at your work. The heat of the sunshine may blow upon you. Stay at it. Everybody left when Jesus was on the cross. He kept on the cross. All the women were weeping. He stayed on the cross. The thief was making fun of him. He stayed on the cross. The rain came. The flood came. The heat came. He stayed on the cross. Light changed into darkness and there was a sick darkness. He stayed on the cross. He felt the pain and the agony of suffering. He stayed on the cross. Tears came and he cried, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? But remember, he stayed on the cross. The Shepherd was meeting and all the friends and the neighbors were driven away, but he stayed on the cross. Until he was able to say, My father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Paul had persecution. Fasting soften. Watching soften. In cold and nakedness. But he stayed there. He completed the purpose of God for his life. Until he said, I have fought a good fight. He knew he finished the race. He wasn't tired. Until he finished it. What is the purpose of God for your life? Are you willing to stand up and say, God be my helper? I've determined that purpose. I will stay at it until the end. Say on your knees and let us pray. Determine that purpose of God. Stay at it. Sickness may come. Persecution may come. Trouble may come. Stay at it. Stick to it. Keep on doing it until you are successful.